Let's go to another super intriguing night game where the atmosphere should be bananas, okay? So Arkansas is playing Texas A&M at Jerry World. Right now, Texas A&M is a one and a half point favorite in the Betfred Sportsbook over under 47 and a half. And I'll just tell you this, that atmosphere is always insane. Now you give those Aggies and those Hogs all day long to, you know, do what college football fans do when their teams don't play at night until at night. That place is going to be crazy. I hope Jerry, I hope Jerry World and, and Jerry Jones has some extra security for that game because it could get wild inside Jerry World. As I said, Texas A&M a slight one and a half point favorite. And I, I'll just say this, I, you know, I do wonder, obviously, after everything that's happened with Texas A&M, Arkansas looking pretty good, although they had that scare against Bobby Petrino and Missouri State the other day. I do wonder if the wrong team's favorite. And let me explain why. And again, don't push picks on you, but but here's what I do think. So I do think it, this one's pretty straightforward. This is going to be decided in two places. One, on the defensive side of the ball for Texas A&M. It's going to be curious to see if they can slow down that Arkansas rushing attack, okay? Arkansas, listen, one thing I love about Sam Pittman, one thing I love about Arkansas, they have a brand and we know who they are, okay? One thing that drives me nuts about college football teams, they're switching schemes, they're switching coaches, they're doing this, they're doing that. They never get an identity, right? Think about Nebraska under Scott Frost. One year, they're great on defense, but can't move the ball. Next year, they're great on offense right now, but they had to just fire the defensive coordinator because the defensive coordinator is terrible. And I know Scott Frost is gone now, but there's just never been an identity with that team. One thing I love about Arkansas we know what their identity is. Sam Pittman's like, we're, I'm an offensive line coach. We're going to line up and we're going to run the ball right at you. And we're going to see if you can stop us. So far this year in college football, against some pretty decent teams. Nobody's been able to stop them. Right now they are in the top 10 nationally in rushing. Rocket Sanders has been an absolute monster. Number three in rush yards on the season. And remember, Arkansas has played three games. There's teams out there that have played four games. Rocket Sanders number three nationally in rushing yards. This is a guy that has 440 yards on the ground, seven yards per carry, three touchdowns already this season. And I think it's going to be interesting to see this, to see him against this Texas A&M front. And I think this is a big week for Texas A&M because look, I get that they won last week against Miami and that was a great win for them. And that was a win that they needed. And my stance on winning, I don't care how you win. If you get a win against a top 15 team like Miami was, I don't care how it happens. You got the job done and we need to give you credit. What I would also say though, is if you watch the game and we all did watch the game, we also know the truth. That Texas A&M offense, which we're going to get into in a minute, was not great, but the defense gave up some big yards as well, okay? Miami rushed for 175 yards on the ground, five yards per carry. And so on one side of the football, I do think that's very interesting. You have an elite rushing attack against a defensive front that just is not getting the job done right now, ranked 83rd nationally in rush defense. That's with all those five stars, and I know they're most of them are freshmen, and they're young, and they're this, and they're that. Well, they're getting game reps, and they're going to see maybe the best offensive line that they'll see all year long in the Arkansas rush attack. On the other side, and this is where it gets interesting, how do you beat Arkansas? Well... Of all people, Bobby Petrino kind of gave you the blueprint last week, didn't he? You throw the ball, you throw the ball a lot, and you make Arkansas make plays in the secondary, and Arkansas could not do that last week. Bobby freaking Petrino walked into Fayetteville, and Arkansas got the win in credit. I don't care how you win. Bobby Petrino in his passing offense, 357 yards passing, almost eight and a half yards per completion. They threw the ball all over the field against Arkansas. And again, that's where I worry about Texas A&M. Again, styles make fights. We talk about this all the time. Styles make fights. And that Texas A&M pass offense has not been good. Now, it obviously looked better last week with Max Johnson. I get all that. Good for the Aggies. But they also, at the end of the day, they got the win. We got to give them credit. But you just watch the game. They finished with 140 yards passing, okay? And so, yes, Max Johnson is more stable. I think he's more comfortable. I, I don't think he's going to make the mistakes that Haynes King is going to make. But on the flip side, it's not as though he slung the rock all over the field. Now, I will say those two five-star freshmen were out last week because of suspension. They're both back. We know that Evan Stewart is one of the few bright spots in the passing attack early in the season. 
He's only played two games. He does have 10 catches uh, for over 100 yards in those two games. You also get Chris Marshall back, and Anaya Smith has been awesome. So we'll see if this passing attack will be better with the two freshmen in the lineup. But I got to tell you, don't tell you how to pick, but two key advantages. Arkansas's run offense against Texas A&M's rush defense. Arkansas's pass defense, I don't know if they can be exposed against Texas A&M. My official bet Fred pick is Arkansas plus one and a half. Don't tell you how to bet. That's where I'm going in this one.